Hi, I'm Gary White for Central Kentucky Television at St. Catherine College, and I'm here with Dr. Rob Slocum, who is the Dean of the Arts and Sciences Department here at, or is the Dean of Arts and Sciences oh. for the St. Catherine College. And we're going to talk about a book that he has written that was just published, I believe, last week, called Seeing and Believing, Reflections for Faith. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little about the book. Well, the book uses an idea, I'll just even show you here, mm -hmm. here. so it has a collection of reflections, each of which starts with an image. And that image could be a moment in a scripture, I mean like Jesus transfigured on the mountaintop or the Annunciation, but it could also be a moment in any person's life. So I draw on some of my own experiences in this as well. I mean maybe a moment in a in a race or a moment when my daughter was born or a turning point that I experienced in an internship in a hospital one time. But the idea that that moment in time becomes a starting point for a reflection. And then working from that, it's possible to draw in applications. What does this mean for my life of faith? What does this mean for the future of my life? What does this mean for decisions I need to make? What does this mean for uh, setting the right priorities, getting obstructions out of the way. So the method in this is then that each reflection has a, an image that goes with it. Now, mm -hmm. the image is not in that sense an illustration of the reflection, but it evokes that kind of thinking. So in other words, we don't just think with our minds, we think with our hearts. So the use of the image can help to get us thinking in a different track, to open up a new way of knowing for us. And so the method here is to draw together active sort of mental reflection and prayer with the use of image. What do we see? How does it inform us? How does this moment in time serve as a starting point for further reflection, deepening experience? So yeah. that's, that's the basic method that we have. And the publisher of this is published by Forward Movement Publications from mm -hmm. Cincinnati, Ohio, brought some very helpful additions to the work itself. So they very intentionally included response space in each reflection mm -hmm. so that the reader, the user of this book, can make his or her own reflections in response or draw something or just a doodle or a sketch. So the idea is that ultimately each book becomes unique because it has both my reflections and the reflections that the user of the book can bring to it uh, for themselves. Um, also, at the back of the book, there's additional space for reflection and even like a pocket part. So if they have mm -hmm. drawings that they make or uh, mementos, remembrances that they want to keep, that can become part of it as well. I thought that right. was a really neat idea. So it's kind of part journal as well. And as, indeed, it is. The subtitle is a devotional journal. Well, there you go. Now, <laughs> and it has, so you hit it right on the head, uh, about 53 of these images. So it would be possible for someone to use them one a year. Um, mm -hmm. and, excuse me, one a, one one a week, week throughout the year, uh, but they can do it in any way they want to. So, for instance, they could do uh, 53 consecutive days, maybe a season like Easter or Lent, or just in a time of life where they wanted to intensively engage with these sorts of reflections over a series of days. And I've used it in a variety of contexts. I've used these reflections in certain classes that I've taught here at St. Catherine College. And indeed, a couple of my students were very encouraging of uh, moving forward with this project and indeed brought their own kind of suggestions to it as well. I've also used some of these illustrations in sermons that I've preached or ref, you know, reflections in terms of retreat, uh, meditations, quiet days that I've led. So it's had a variety of very helpful applications. Even if you look at the book, the, uh, it has like a spiral binding, mm -hmm. binding for it so that the book can lay flat so that the, the reader, the user can find that available and right. just really easy to kind of make their own reflections to it. Now for the pictures, so the 
verbiage is your reflection on right. that picture. Where did the picture come no, from? No, no, no. No, it's not a reflection on the picture. It's a reflection of an important moment. And okay. then the picture may be related to it, but it's almost like you've got two different media s kind of simultaneously in there together. Now, I took the picture, so these are, so these are, all, your pictures. These are all my original pictures that I've okay. taken at different times. Some of them very recently, I mean one or two just within a few months of the book's publication. Others of these are pictures I've had for, for many years that I was able mm -hmm. to incorporate. But the idea is it's not just a snapshot of, well, that's a nice scene. It's not just, well, isn't that pretty? But that the image itself can be evocative, can draw the reader, the user of the book, the viewer of the uh -huh. image in, in a way that, that can spark further reflection. So the main point I want to say is the idea is in many different ways through the reflection, the text of the reflection, through the image, uh, through the space that's available, there are even a few poems scattered through the context of the book, all of it to share a method that draws together both reflection and experience and being able to do that in a way that the reader can carry on uh, for themselves and not just in the context of using the book but in every day of their life. It's a different way of seeing. It's a different way of synthesizing reflection and experience to deepen in faith. Now you said you have written other books in the past but this one's a little different, right? Right, right. Yeah, this is actually my 12th book but others have been more in the nature of scholarly works in mm -hmm. religious studies, theology, reference books in religious studies, uh, co-edited or edited volumes which would be like collection of essays and those are all very important to me and very important I hope to the wider world but this is a different approach I actually had one publisher say wow this is really different from your other works and I said yeah <laughs> and that's a good thing <laughs> right and, and indeed it draws on the theology and it draws on the, the kind of scholarly work that I've done but it's very different it's more like just taking a piece from that, just a moment in time, uh, a truth or a saying or a story, and then reflecting on it in a way that can draw out uh, a person's own reflections and belief. Now, these books just became available in the last week or so, so how can people get copies? Well, they can get copies by <coughs> ordering it from the publisher, uh, Forward Movement Publications in Cincinnati, Ohio, and they have a website and it's available there. Forwardmovement.org. Uh, Forwardmovement.org, and it's available uh, readily uh, through them. And okay. uh, also, for what it's worth, there will be a night at St. Catherine mm -hmm. College in January. I believe that'll be January 9th, where I'll be doing a presentation on this, and we'll okay. actually have some of uh, the images in larger format to to show as well, and we'll have an opportunity to interact with people about the book, book signing now. too. Yeah, indeed, a book signing, and. Uh, in, in congregation at times, what I've been able to do is even give a response time so that people, after having heard some of these reflections, are encouraged to draw their own or write their own or put together their own responses. And again, the book has space for that, so I'm certainly looking forward to being able to invite that from the participants in these uh, meetings as well. So that's going to be January 9th January here at 9th St. Catherine's. At St. Catherine College. Do you know what time? I expect it'll be around four, but we'll have to confirm that okay. as we get a little closer to the time. And here on campus. Here on we'll campus, right. Just right here in our wonderful new library. So uh, we'll have a, a space available and so people can come and see the library as well. Great. So that's going to be on January 9th and we'll have the availability to learn more about this book with Dr. Slocum. Again, it is called Seeing and Believing Reflections for Faith. It's available by going to forwardmovement.org, right where you can contact Dr. Slocum here at St. Catharines. Would you be able That's to right. help them get them? I would be delighted to help. If anyone wants uh, assistance or just wants to talk about what they've seen in the book, I'll be glad to say more. And it does have pictures and words by Dr. Slocum, right? And your opportunity for your own kind of contribution as well. That's right. So that's great. Well, congratulations on getting this one a little Thanks different so than what you've had before. Yes, indeed. Um, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk with you about it today. Yeah, thank you. And again, I've been talking with Dr. 
Robert Slocum at St. Catherine College, and the book is available from forwardmovement.org. This is Gary White for Central Kentucky Television.